uh, good afternoon all uh, i welcome you all to the lecture series on research uh, essentials organized by faculty of commerce and management uh, which is on fourth consecutive saturday starting from 13th of november till 4th december uh, before breaking about the uh, details about the lecture series i would like to uh, request uh, dean madam to uh, please say few words about this uh, series good afternoon uh, enthusiastic researchers uh, i'm sure uh, the interest in research has uh, enabled all of us to come on a saturday afternoon and uh, if you have read the uh, brochure or the flyer that has been floated it has to be done for uh, saturdays in, a, in the consecutive way and we have uh, very eminent speakers speakers whom i have interacted with personally and i'm sure that uh the you know inputs we are going to get are going to help us in our research journey uh, research targets is one part but our research journey is really important and uh, i wish everybody all the best and uh, i would definitely be attending all the four uh, of these sessions and uh, at the end coming out with a very concrete tangible output and i hope that uh, this is how we will proceed not with just this lecture series but the upcoming lecture series as well because this will be just part 1 uh, if uh, we get a lot of good response and uh, if it is so desired we can have such a series of sessions so without taking any uh, more time i would also want rahul sir if you can just spend a few more minutes to brief about the groups and about this series it will really benefit all of us and of course uh, then uh, we are eager to hear uh, dr ajay and uh, uh, we will be you know uh, starting the workshop thank you so much and all the very best to all the researchers thank, thank you ma'am thank you for your appreciated uh, appreciation words uh, so uh, dear all uh, with the intention to uh, as we know we are uh, heading towards uh, vision to the nac 2023 and uh, having a good score and with that one intention is there to create a research ecosystem at vishwakarma university and to uh, to take a small step towards to build a research ecosystem at vishwakarma university uh, we have organized this uh, online lecture series on uh, research essentials so we all are working on uh, research papers book chapters conference papers so few of our experts in that few of our in, uh, learning stages uh, we call them novices in the research field uh, so when we're uh, having the brainstorming about this lecture series so both the resource persons uh, were uh, of the uh, opinion that so definitely they are going to brief you about the research process what are the research uh, details are there how to do conduct research but both were the opinion that uh, they try to uh, remove or overcome the fear of the research so both have prepared in uh, that way only Uh, so most of the time, this is not an only uh, intention to provide you the information and the insight on the research because that you get from online lectures and uh, uh, many other courses. But we want some outcome, and uh, from this course, that's why uh, we have formed the groups. And uh, all of you have may receive a Google sheet. If not receive a Google sheet, I will share that uh, link of Google sheet in the chat box. So you can form a group with your colleagues, maybe from your department, from other department. If it is interdisciplinary, uh, it is uh, appreciable. So you have to form a group of two to three uh, faculties, or you can, if you are a research guide, you can form a group with your uh, research scholars also. So why to form a group is you may working on some paper, book chapters, as I said, and uh, if whatever the tools and uh, methods are going to be taught by this resource person. it's better if you are applying simultaneously as we are uh, going ahead with this lecture series so uh, which uh, once the group is formed so you have to work on uh, you have to identify the problem statement you have to work on the research paper and today uh, as adhesar is going to brief on many aspects of the research and the literature review so you may work on uh, this uh, next week and you may come with some your queries concerns and whatever the tools is or the software says uh, taught to you you may uh, apply uh, things over there and if your queries concerns are there and if you require any help in your uh, research paper book chapters so before uh, in next week's lecture series first 15 minutes will be uh, reserved for that discussion and obviously after the lecture series uh, there is always question and answer session is there so the intention is that 
uh, simultaneously you should work on your research paper or uh, any other research activity and uh, we want to support uh, your the research activity and we are expecting uh, your research outcome as a publication maybe conference research paper so this is what uh, intention is there and that's why the group is formed i will share the uh, google drive link in the chat box and uh, and not but last but not the least i all the request if possible i have shared brochure so with you, you can uh, post a linkedin post uh, using this brochure about this uh, session now uh, without wasting much of time as uh, i welcome our uh, today's resource person dr ajay kumar puri uh, he is assistant professor at uh, travel and tourism department at vishwakarma university pune uh, now i hand over this session to ajay sir. ajay sir yes sir thank you very much dr sir Okay, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Very good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for the whole team of commerce and management for inviting me for this lecture. And. Uh, i will be talking about research framework and literature review tools so there are broadly two topics what are what is research framework and uh, what are the different tools we can use for the literature review so as you can see from the first picture and uh, yeah i will be taking few examples from the cooking yeah so so i will be taking few examples ki because cooking is also art and science and research is also art and science not just the science so let's see and uh, i think yes with all your permission i will just start so yeah this is me and a uh, little bit about me is uh, i am from delhi born brought up and uh, did my bachelor's from jnu and after that my mba from pondicherry central university and after that my phd from university of hyderabad and uh, after that uh, Pune is my first working place. Uh, before that, I was working in a B school, and then I joined Vishkarma in January this year only. So, and I'm very active on Twitter. So this is my Twitter handle. So anyone of you want to see what other things I get involved and talk about, so please, I will be very happy to connect with you on social media. This is my personal email address. So in case you are looking for any collaboration, any co-author work, or any any research proposal or anything. or in general so please be happy you are welcome to connect okay so yes this is what i think <laughs> that research is a kind of a hell and uh, we all experience it and those who have come to phd i think they will be more agree with me that research is kind of a hell right okay one more point uh, every slide has a number here in case in case you have any doubt any particular slide so please note down the number and you can let me know ki on this some doubt i think there is someone's mic and some noise is coming so please mute it thank you yeah so there is a slide number on every slide so if you have any slide specific question please note down the slide number and let me know so that we can come back to the slide and we can have the answer right so yes so i assume that all of you also think that research is a hell yes and it becomes very painful exercise and uh, my purpose here is and what you also think that i can help you to make it less painful right so that is our discussion was myself rahul sir and omvir sir that ki sir how to make it you know research little less painful we know it's going to be painful but how to make it less little less painful so we thought why not just share some of our thoughts with each other and try to help each other and even i will learn a lot in these sessions ki how to make research less painful okay so i will share few things which help me actually to make the research less painful so and i think in the coming sessions omvi sir is going to help us by formulating hypothesis testing hypothesis right and then i will again come back with the third session fourth session that how to do the citations properly and to manage the plagiarism in the papers so that is the plan right so and uh, like i will be very happy in case in between you have during the session any question and you think that 
we should not move without answering that question. So you are welcome to stop me in between and ask that question. And if you think that you can hold that question till the end and uh, then you want to ask it, that is also okay. So please note down the question, same time, slide number, and then we can take the question at the end. So I'm okay if you want to stop me in between or you want to ask the question at the end, right? And uh, anything else? I think, okay, yes. We do also have uh, three short exercises in the in the at the mid of this session almost right so that uh, we will check that what actually we are learning so of course it is not a forceful exercises uh, it, if you want to involve you are happy and if you don't want to involve we all are happy <laughs> okay let's go with that okay thank you and uh, yeah so in the cooking we all know one of the most important ingredient that is small one but it's very important salt and in the research, that salt is actually why. Why you want to do the research, okay? So if that why is missing, so actually that research is help for you, okay? So in journal or academically research, we say that why research is required for the creation of knowledge. We want to create knowledge so that we can give answer for some questions have the better understanding of something. Something means according to us, our requirement, our discipline, our interest, but we want to have a better understanding. We want to create a knowledge. So that is what the academic reason is why we should have research, okay? And in any slide, if you see this thing here at the bottom, it means it uh, the slide information is taken from this source and uh, after the session, the PDF format will be of the slide will be given to you. So do not worry about the links and everything. So you'll get the complete material. Okay. So this is the academic reason, the why we should do the reason, research. Now, my approach is we should also find our own reason as well that why should we do the research? Because please take from me with doing PhD research. And I took 7.5 years to finish my thesis. Okay, so you can say that not intelligent, definitely dumb, but I took 7.5 years full time doing PhD and it took me that much time. So I had my own reasons and you should also have your own reasons why you want to do the research for the education, just for the education purpose. You know, you want to improve your profile. You want to have better opportunities in the form of salary, better position, or just you are very curious. You want to understand the world or you have the targets, you know, we all have targets nowadays. So yes, if you have some targets to achieve and that is why you want to do the research or you want to be a policy critic, you know, you think that our governments are not doing good and they have, they do not have the good policies. So you cannot critic them unless, unless you have, you know, some technical understanding of how actually do the critic with the right data, with the right statement. For that also you need research. If you worry a lot about environment, so then yes, climate change related research. If you just want to be famous because you think that only intelligent people do research. So if I do research, I will be very famous among my peers, among my colleagues in my family. And they think I'm doing very intelligent work. Maybe that could be a reason. Or you just want to do work for the human rights for all genders and for all costs, because that is also very interesting for, for many people. Or you just want to work for the poverty elevation. You just hate why people are poor. We are working so hard after industry revolution, after three and almost 300 years, why still people are poor? What mistake we are making? So that could be a reason. Consumption. We are consuming a lot, lot and lot. What could be the consequences? Production. We are producing a lot and it could be related to the medicine. So any reason, and these are the just few reasons, but the point is you have to find your reason. Until unless you will not find your reason, research will be hell for us. Okay. And if you're not at comfort with your reason of research, reading your research will also become hell for the readers as well, because they have to go with all the drag key, why this person has done this is, is not making any sense, right? So, and I think uh, in the coming presentation, it will become more and more clear that why it is very important to find, first find out the reason why you want to do the research, because then you will dedicate those lonely hours those rejections by the uh, publishers okay and uh, all the different different type of understanding so please put sufficient time i will be taking giving very less time to why in my slides but you should give in your real personal life a lot of time to think about why you want to do the research okay yeah. 
with this, we are going to know what is research. Okay. So there are different ways to understand research, but this is one understanding from the book, A Student's Guide to Methodology, which I studied during my PhD. I found, okay, okay, that uh, research is about asking questions. First thing is ask questions. Okay. First, you ask to yourself, then you ask to your professors, then you can ask your family members as well. And then you think that this question is important, you can definitely ask and justify it and answer it even writing a research paper. But the first step is asking questions. And uh, you will ask questions only when we allow students also to ask questions, right? So, because sometimes I got this feedback from, and see everything I'm speaking is my own personal experience. So please, I'm not generalizing for anyone that uh, I got feedback from the student key. We do not ask questions because sometimes teachers get angry. Definitely, I'm not talking about you, but we know. Right? So, so if we do not allow others to ask questions, definitely we will also not ask questions. The first thing is allow others to ask questions and we should also ask questions. right? And that is very most important step for the research was ask questions and then exploring problems. Okay, what are the different types of problems and how you can explore them? So that is the first step. That's why it is in a different color. And once you know what type of questions you're dealing with and what problem you're trying to explore, then reflect on what emerges in order to make meaning from the data. So there are two important words here, data and reflect. So reflect is very important word here because not everyone will respond to the same data in a similar way. That's why it is a reflection. It is your reflection towards the data what you think about the data, what is your analysis says. So you have to give it a proper meaning. So asking the questions and then reflect on that question and the answer based upon the data. And then the third part, tell the research story. Okay, tell that research story. And when we say tell means we need to write the research papers. That is our storytelling that write the research papers and why it is a story, and of course not a story which will uh, give you sleep, but actually it will take away sleeps from you because you found something very interesting in your research and you are sleepless to publish it. But it's a story because it should interest others also. That's why I think this author has added here a story that it, because you know that every day thousands and thousands of paper get published, but how many get high citation? The only paper which are able to tell their research in a form of a story, which with which others are able to connect, right? So question, then answer of that question or your reflection on that question based upon the data and then communicate that whole research as a story in the form of a research paper, in the form of the books, right, of course. So that is what my explanation is. That is how I understand what research is, okay? And I will, okay, I think I should not ask, okay. so. Till here, it's okay. Then we can go next. Okay. So now let's cook some research now. See, uh, so I told you now this is the way. So I, I'm not teaching you a typical framework, you know, of a research from any book. I'm just trying to say how I think, you know, what research framework is, you know. So, and framework, if, framework is a very difficult concept to explain, by the way. And uh, in simple words, if I just explain to you, Framework means these are the systematic conditions under which any one thing work. Like uh, in, in our college, we have the timing to start, timing to end. We All our classes are scheduled. We know who will sit where most of the time. And uh, we also know whom should we report to. So this is the framework under which VU works. So similar way in the research also we have the framework so that we know almost roughly under what, uh, how, a research, how research should work. So that is what actually framework is, some rough systematic conditions. So, so let's cook some research because you know that cooking is, cannot be done just like that. There are steps to follow, there are timings to follow, and of course you need knowledge, you need interest and everything. So that is why I, I was trying to connect cooking and the research. So let's go one by one. So the first thing you need to decide is what to cook, right? Of course, if you don't know that, what are you going to make? Whether gajar ka halwa, kheer, or 
what do you say dosa then you will never know what ingredients you need what recipe you need and what methods you are going to require so first thing is what to cook and that answer if you talk about in research that is deal uh, two aspects of the research deal with the question like what to cook or what to answer is introduction part and the literature review that are your major task in the introduction part is what actually you are going to answer okay so what actually you are going to cook what at the end you are going to get okay and you write introduction for that and you write literature for that and of course uh, i won't be able to explain everything in one session but of course this session will be very helpful for the people who just want to have at least some idea in a very simple format ki what is a research so uh, at the very first thing you should have an introduction and the literature review which will help you to know what are you doing actually what are you trying to achieve what are you trying to cook in your research now the second point comes in any research is how to cook what is the methodology right mm, and again methodologies are very specific to the disciplines that is why we do not change our disciplines very often and if you change it is very challenging because sociology has a very different methodology than the management studies biology has a very different methodology of doing research than the humanities so that is why we usually have only one discipline in our career and we stick to that methodology right so that is the second aspect how actually you are going to do the research how you are going to collect the data how you going to do the analysis right though you are writing a different uh, aspect ki how actually you have done the analysis but in the methodology as well you have to give an indication how you are going to do the analysis of the data that is the second important point third is what is the result of your cooking means that is the data analysis and what did you find actually from it you got some data by using a methodology and now you have done the analysis of it and what is the result of it right and then you will write the result section of your research and you explain uh, what are your findings in that and after that people will or you will say ki how your cooking is in comparison to the others and that is the fourth part of any research is the discussion the results you found you will uh, compare them with the earlier results and then you say that how different or how similar your results are and if you cannot put your results in the perspective of the earlier research that is the most uh, common reason for the publishers to reject our papers because they cannot uh, connect the knowledge how you are contributing in the knowledge and they cannot connect until unless you discuss or we discuss in our research that is better word we we discuss in our research that how our results are similar or different from the earlier research and that is the part of the discussion work and then we have okay so what you cook this dish okay i'm writing shit why because when you get rejection from the publishers they are actually saying that thing to our work you know and you feel that ki oh my god how can he do he how can he write such a comment on my work which i was working from one year you know they treat work like that and it's not their fault actually because we are in the learning stage and we are looking at our work day day and night and for us everything is like 100% perfect but only the person who is looking it first time they can tell what are the mistakes and what for you what is, is a fantastic dish for another person is just a shit so in the conclusion you have to justify okay so what you cook this but how can you justify it is just not another bad dish okay so you have to justify in the conclusion ki what difference your research is going to make and that is the part of the conclusion see uh, on each of these aspect literature review methodology data analysis discussion and conclusion you know people have written books there are books for each of this content so definitely i won't be able to tell everything in one session but i'm just giving a very summarized gist how i understand this and how 
I take help when I I stuck. Okay, when I get a negative comment from one publisher or another publisher, like recently my paper got rejected from two publishers, and I'm working third time on it, and their comment is just like he I don't know anything. So and then we feel like oh my god, is really my research a shit? Not necessarily, and maybe so answers are both. So that's why I always take help. Uh, always give sincere help, right? So these are the few, uh, like these are the important part of the research framework, like what to cook, how to cook, what is the result of your cooking, and how similar or different is your cooking? Okay, and whatever you cook, what different? How how is it different from the others? Okay, so similar in the research, you answer some question, good. You use the methodology, good. You did the results, very good. Your results are similar, different from the earlier, very good. But how they are different from, uh, and how they contribute into the society, into the economy, in the environment, and how they actually uplift us and our knowledge, that is the conclusion part. And the conclusion part is the only thing which can save our work, you know, to be called a shit, <laughs> okay? And, and that is the most difficult part. One of the most difficult part, for me it is at least, you know, writing the conclusion and the introduction. I think conclusion is more even than the introduction, right? So I guess if we all are okay here and no question here, so I would like to go to the next slide, right? So uh, I will be, uh, as a part of the framework, what we also need to understand very important is that research has broadly three approaches. So, and first I'm just telling you what are the research approaches. These are the plans and procedures. So you have to plan first thing about the research. It's not like, key, okay, today I woke up at five o'clock, let me complete my research. Not possible. So you have to plan it and you have to uh, learn the procedures and do the complete procedures, right? That is very important part about the research. Second is, it also includes some broad assumptions. Assumptions are the most important part in research. Like what do you assume, right? And the more your assumption is based upon the books, the other studies, the safer zone you are in. If not, you are in trouble. So your research approaches are the plans and procedures, the assumptions you, uh, you took while doing that study, and the detailed methods of data collection, analysis, and interpretation, right? And that is why research is very painful because it's called, it, it is a uh, synthesis of all these so many you know, different aspect, like finding out the problem, then taking care of the assumptions, then taking care of the methods, taking care of the analysis, taking care of interpretation, and then writing it up. And that's why I think today, many people write joint papers, because it's very painful writing a single author paper, though it is highly appreciated, but it's very painful. So yeah, so this is about the research approaches that, and we have the different approaches, and we will be coming to this one, yes. Broadly in the research approaches, we have three types, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods. We must be aware about the qualitative and quantitative, and mixed methods may be new for some people. And in case you want to learn more about it, so I have kept a link here. So this University of Michigan has a very detailed, uh, what do you say, go down of all the material related to the mixed methods, all the different, different scholars and everything. So you can find a very good material here on this link. So I just kept it there. And uh, in the coming few slides, we will be talking in detail, like what is qualitative approach? What is quantitative approach? What is mixed method approach? And when to use which approach? Okay, I guess we are cool till here. Yes. Now I have a small exercise for you. Uh, this uh, tweet on, on the left of the screen is getting viral from day four yesterday. He's a professor in Mexico and uh, he has explained these three approaches by using this meme. And meme is a very, very important medium of communicating an idea, you know? So, and it is getting very, very popular. And I am the fan of meme. I learn a lot from them. So yes, so now just, I want to hear from you so that before I will make you sleep, all of you, that uh, why do you think, because I'm not going to tell you in which order he's saying who is qualitative, who is mixed method, and who is quantitative, but what do you think, uh, 
whichever you think it is qualitative, why it is qualitative. If you, and you, you can tell me a single word or a line. So I, I will just want to note it down here. Anyone? I will wait a few seconds, otherwise I will move on. Qualitative because your uh, data is not given, I think. As for me. Okay. Data uh, numbers which is not given, but mm -hmm. we, we can say that the theory is there or some information is there. So therefore it is qualitative. Okay. Uh, I think, sir, uh, the lady uh, symbolizes qualitative method. Okay. Then uh, the guy in the middle, he mm -hmm. symbolizes in the same sequence mixed method. Uh, okay. Why? Because uh, uh, he has the, the, the hairdo, which is not a stereotypical of uh, maybe that is what I think. Yeah. And uh, the the last person in the uh, suit, he is he symbolizes quantitative because uh, something which is very much uh, measure measurable or which can be defined in terms of his attitude or maybe the uh, you know looking at the looking at his at his stance, one can uh, talk very specifically about his uh, can talk. I mean, it's just a perception, just a perception. Yeah, and the answer came from I cannot see the name. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, this is Mayuresh. Yeah, Mayur, yeah. I, thank you so much. That was very good understanding of this meme. And I think if others want to clap for Mayuresh, so that was good. Okay. So uh, yes, Mayuresh, you are right that uh, the person want to say that the lady representing qualitative, then the mix and the quantitative. Now the question is why? So that is why I'm looking for why the lady has been mentioned qualitative. So I'm looking for that answer and why the guy middle mixed and then the quantitative. I know so lady is always like qualitative stuff. Okay, so I think that is very stereotypic type, whatever it is. Yeah, so okay, that the ladies like qualitative research. Okay, any other answer? Mm -hmm. So that is our perception, uh, that is our perception as a society that yes, uh, now that again, as I very uh, consciously use the word perception. And I think almost all of us, uh, the first response is uh, lady is qualitative. Uh, and when you prod to want to know why, we all mm -hmm. hesitate. And that hesitation itself is the answer that yes, it is qualitative. But why, I mean, uh, would be, uh, could be looked at with a lot of biases. So yes, it is uh, there like that, like that way only. Okay. Okay. I don't know if it is right, but you know, the lady, uh, she is not looking at who is behind her. Maybe it's exploratory. She really doesn't know the answers. Perhaps the qualitative methods will give the answers. And so what happens, you know, uh, maybe still a mystery unfolding. So that's why it's qualitative. While uh, the last person is quantitative because uh, somewhat has a clearer picture who is ahead of him or whom he can see. But uh, the middle person is a little safer, wants to, you know, he knows who's in the right side of him and the left side of him and knows he needs both of them. So it's mixed method. Great. Thank you so much. What is your good name? So my name is Jayashree. Yo, thank you so much, Jayashree, ma'am. It's a very brilliant answer. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Mayuresh, sir, and Jayashree, ma'am. They're, they're brilliant, brilliant answers. Yes. A few others, if you have some, them, please. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Uh, is it like uh, ladies are a bit difficult to understand, and uh, the you no, know, the gentlemen in the last you no, know, we mm -hmm. say you no, know, the men are very straightforward and easy to understand kind of a thing. Okay. And can we write here? Okay, I'm not writing about the ladies. Okay, it is about the research method complex. Okay, so. <laughs> So please don't beat me when you see me next time in view. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was very good input. Yes. Uh, 
above this sign that is uh, i couldn't hear yeah amol this side i said yes yes amol so i think is it structured maybe structured versus unstructured kind of because what you say yeah. is this which you know, one structured higher. which one unstructured third one the quantitative you know the third person is more of you know structured attire neat you know, sorted kind of you know mm -hmm. in shape uh, okay. shave and everything i mean you could you know, everything in the sense almost everything that is visible is uh, neat clean structured organized kind it's of structured. yes, yes. That's one. And, and the one first one, I don't know. At least it's for me. It's difficult to make out in the sense in terms of attire and all. You know, seems mm -hmm. to be combination of something and all. And the mm -hmm. second one, as the mayor sir rightly said, is a bit of combination. There's the satire part, you know, this semi casual as they call it these days and all, which otherwise should have been formal. But because of the way it is tailored, it looks like casual and it's bit of a gray area there. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, thanks. And which one is unstructured? First one. First one. Okay. Almost second one. Uh, I again, I mean, uh, ladies might have a different perspective, <laughs> but I think so. So just a small addition. Please, please. Uh, the meme heading, the heading of the meme itself suggests qualitative, mixed, and quantitative. And the mm -hmm. way we are looking at the image is also from left to right. Yes. So that is an obvious association from left to right. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. May may I add here? This is Dhritiman here. Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, from that particular picture you, we see, uh, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to justify the linkage. Uh, the the lady standing here is Lady Gaga, and she's quite well known for her flamboyance in her dressing style in her music. She's quite well known for the variations she brings on upon not even in the stage but al also behind the stage. Can I say so, unusual? Unusual. Yes. Unusual. Not not the common common type of dressing mm -hmm. that is done so that can be linked to the qualitative method because there is no specific uh, output here we 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 speak of subjective terms people mm -hmm. people respond to such kind of dressing senses as, as uh, differently mm -hmm. the second guy who is standing right here is jared leto mm -hmm. right so he played the role of a, a bisexual guy in dallas bias club he also played the role of jo joker right mm -hmm. so this guy can be a mixed uh, combination of all the characters he played characters, uh, I mean, that can be a mixed methodology as, as well. So uh, the method acting he, he had done, it mm -hmm. can be a, a combination of both the methods. Mm -hmm. and the last person, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of this person, uh, but uh, the movies that I have seen, uh, seen about him so far, uh, those were straight uh, stereotype uh, uh, characters of, of men, of, of, of men that we generally try to implement in movies. That's uh, the way through which, uh, you know, uh, how Marlboro did the lifestyle marketing, introducing introducing men, a specific misogynist uh, structure in the picture. That, that Do directly, yeah. Dole wala hero, you know. Dole wala hero. Player, dilo, dole wala hero. A typical hero that we see in movies. So that directly strikes that position that this quantitative analysis will, will be giving me a score. And this score will be letting me know that this guy is obviously better than the other. There would be, would, would, would be no subjective conclusion it will be an exact conclusion and that is how i can we can relate uh, these three characters together that is brilliant Dirtiman, sir. yes yeah some more inputs omir sir has raised hand omir sir uh, yes sir uh, just sir, yes, sir. Uh, my thought process is a little different as what others have suggested mm -hmm. uh, as far as out of these three methods are concerned i would say we are uh, on a continuum we are moving from informal to formal one mm -hmm. as well as we are moving on scale of generalization so as you can see in case of qualitative methods we can't generalize it wherein in quantitative methods the scale of generalization will be on higher side that could be one of the reasons uh, in the you know uh, the qualitative method itself it's known as uh, more uh, I would say more complex process to establish for generalizations, right? So that is my one point of view. Informal, less generalized in qualitative, formal, more generalized in quantitative methods. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, we can use a bit of mix of both. And again, the references and uh, you maybe the previous authors as a reference is required to establish mixed, com you know, mixed methods. 
mm-hmm. so uh, i am i am quite sure you will also come to know, come to conclusion very soon you know i am having a curiosity whether what we are uh, you know discussing here is on the right uh, zone right right yeah few more inputs okay so i think we can go next yes please yes i think someone raised hand yeah, yes yes with them please uh, yes sir uh, so i think uh, a quantitative method actually the lady uh, she represents the quantitative method uh, as i mean do i have to even justify it yes that's what we are looking for you know, like okay. what one word uh, is, according is to me sir i think the way she is uh, like presenting herself the accessories and all so uh, in a way she is unconventional compared to the others whereas qualitative uh, the so one uh, word unusual is okay you want to add another word unusual unconventional unconventional i would say okay uh the the gentleman at the extreme right he is uh, he actually represents the quanti- uh, qualitative method uh, because he actually uh, has a uh, the gesture or the body language that he uh, tries to present is, is is completely way different from the uh, the remaining two ones whereas the person in between the man uh, in the blue blazer that we can see mm-hmm. he represents the mixed uh, method so he actually uh, like i i based this uh, particular analysis on the hairstyle that he is uh, trying to have i mean his uh, the way he has dressed up and also um, looking at his apparel and all so mm. that is how is my uh, own analysis yes yes great great thank you yes anyone else would like to add something okay okay i think it's great we got very good points and uh, now you can take the picture of this if you want and now when we dis- when we will finish discussing you know qualitative mixed method and quantitative then you know you self evaluate ki why different people told it is exploration why different people told this one is structured and that one is not structured you know and why actually this uh, picture is going viral you know so you will understand that so because definitely okay and one more thing i would just like to add here is uh there is no perfect research problem and then for that we have the perfect research method we do not have we have to justify it okay we have to justify it of course like uh, if let's say if you say that i uh, yesterday i just woke up and i i, didn't, I invented the medicine for covid of course you cannot do that and nobody is going to believe that so that is why you have to justify it right and uh, i think i should stop here yes so you have to justify the method so we can never say ki for this problem this is the only method no we can never say but yes few methods are better few methods may not be better but if you can justify it you can publish it that's it so let's go the journey ahead uh, and we will try to understand now the qualitative approach okay if you want we will come back to that picture again okay so let's understand qualitative approach from my point of view that qualitative approach deals with the words you know they collect the words words means shabd you know shabd what we uh, write on our facebook status those words that's what facebook is interested in facebook is doing actually one of the biggest not only facebook all see social media they are doing the one of the biggest qualitative research by finding out what we are thinking by analyzing our words you know that's why they need what are we thinking what is in our mind so whenever you collect the word and you analyze the word they are called as the qualitative approach that is a qualitative approach qualitative research okay and i'm telling you from very very basic okay that and if you read another authors you will find better explanations or bigger explanations but at the end qualitative will focus upon the words the methods of your data collection will be in such a way so that you collect the words like you have a interview no you have an interview and then you record the interview and you collect the words okay 
if you are doing the social media analysis of the people, you get all the timeline statuses which are having words. And again, you are doing the collection of the words and the analysis of the words. So qualitative approach deals with the words. Next is, is an approach for exploring and understanding the meaning individuals or groups ascribe. So another important word in qualitative approach is meaning. You always try to identify what meaning that particular what meaning for that problem this particular person or a group is associating. Okay. So you are looking for the meaning of that. So you are not giving the meaning. You are searching the meaning from the perspective of the individuals and the groups, right? About that particular problem which you are trying to understand. Now, the third thing is qualitative approach is a has a flexible report structure. We do not have a very rigid uh, structure for the qualitative research for the publication. It has to be specifically in this format. No, we do not have. It is a little bit flexible, but of course, it, that doesn't mean you can write first conclusion and then the introduction. You cannot do that. You have to, but it is a little flexible, right? So this is what I think qualitative research and approach is. And now you can, uh, Again, look back if you are taking the screenshot of the earlier slide, keep how wrong or right you were, right? Now, uh, let's discuss some examples of it. So one example where qualitative research approach is more appropriate is the violence, okay? And I'm specifically talking about the sexual assault, domestic violence, right? So if you want to, yeah, I can hear some of the guys inside, you do not know how much ladies torture us. But still, if you go with the records, you know, uh, by the criminal records, still on paper, maximum cases, crimes are done against the woman. So let's talk about the crimes done on the woman. So uh, yes, so if you want to understand the domestic violence, so you cannot just, uh, we cannot just circulate a questionnaire and we can ask you, okay, on the scale of one to 10, how hard your husband beaten you, that you beaten you, yes. So you have to sit with the person listen that experience, find meaning out of it, then listen one more person, then meaning, find meaning out of it, and then you tell ki, what is the trauma the domestic violence has on the mindset of the ladies, right? So in this case, qualitative approach is much better than the quantitative approach, okay? So every time with the problem, you have to justify the approach, okay? That is a one example. Another example is, let's say you are, work, you are focusing up your research about the work burnout, like your organization is forcing you a lot and you know they are just not listening to you and you have a lot of work in front of you and you are just fed up with everything and you are losing your brain and you want to understand work burnout of the people. So again, in this case, I think when you listen to them, and you then you interpret their meaning of the word burnout, you will understand. Let me give an example. Let's say you, you surveyed one code, you took the help of a survey and you want to identify the work burnout. Then maximum people told that salary is important for them and that's why they feel the work burnout. But maybe there is a person who has a family issue and salary is okay for that person, right? Maybe the, Traveling time is an issue for that person, right? Maybe the working hours or working days are issue for that person, right? Maybe he, he don't want more salary, but he just want a different department or a different boss, right? So those things, or maybe the person is facing some discrimination based upon gender, based upon some anything else, right? Those things you will understand only when you have, when you use the qualitative approach, okay? One more example we can take. If you are looking for the buying behavior of the luxury purchase, you know, buying a five crore rupees car or any big, big fancy houses, of course, those buying purchase behavior are very different from a middle class or upper middle class buying behavior. And if you, you will use the same questionnaire for the person who flies in jet and helicopters, of course, you will get the wrong answer because that person's style of working is very different. Their mind works very differently. You know, so that it could be another example. If you're working on a luxury purchase problem, 
in that case qualitative approach will be more appropriate like you sit with ambani and then you discuss ki, okay sir aap kaun si chakki ka aata hai right so <laughs> of course aata is not a luxury thing but anything costly which a person buys so that was just on the light or not ki yes so the point is according to the problem you are trying to answer you have to justify the approach and that is why you have the methodology section though small but one of the most important section in the research paper right right i think we are okay with the qualitative now so yeah now let's few words about the quantitative qualitative uh, sorry quantitative approach they deal with the numbers they collect the numbers and they analyze the numbers and they give the results in the form of the numbers or in the form of the visualizations like graphs and other things but largely they are the number people right they deal with the numbers and uh, they largely works with the testing the theory objective is testing the theory by finding relationships between the variables so for them variables are very important exactly identification of the variable okay now what what do you mean by variable variable means anything which can have more than one value that is a variable very simple definition but that is what variables are you know any any social phenomena concept or a uh, yeah social concept or anything for which you can have more than one value it is variable and in quantitative approach our work is to find relationship between all these variables then test the theories that is our objective and quantitative approach has very set structure you cannot play with the structure of the quantitative research right so they have a, they do not have a flexible structure they have, it it is just goes like the introduction and methodology analysis findings conclusion close and uh, they have a very specific requirement for the sample size they have a specific requirement for the level of significance of the hypothesis and everything about which uh, our friend dr omvir sir will discuss in the coming two sessions and we will get we will learn more about it how actually do the have this testing and everything so but it has they have that particular requirements it doesn't matter how hard you work, how hard you work on your work how many experiments you have done if you did not achieve the what typically called as level of significance in your hypothesis testing your paper will be rejected okay so they have a very set structure for the publication of the quantitative research now let's say few examples where quantitative approach is more appropriate let's say you want to uh, identify the relationship between the how many hours a person play video games and how much violent they are in general behavior right so you want to find the identity relationship between these two things so for this i think quantitative approach is better you can uh, regularly monitor calculate or you you know somehow you find out from the people that how many hours they do the gaming in a day and you record it for some time and then you conduct a social psychological test on the, your respondent that how violent they are and then you can match the two scores do the statistic analysis and then you can find out ki, is there any relationship between the number of hours you game and how violent you are another example could be how many your screen time means mobile and sleep disorder so i'm not sure how you will identify the sleep disorder but that is also could be a good quantitative research problem the how what is screen time easily you can find out from the each, per, each person's everyday screen time and sleep disorder you can every day you can ask them how many hours of comfort sleep they had or uh, if they keep the mobile aside how long does it take for them to get to sleep right without looking at it so some way you find out and then you have both the variables and you can then again identify what is the relationship between these two third example is shelf management uh like you we all visit malls you know where we see these groceries and if you are very interested ki how actually these uh, uh, staff at the mall they decide where to keep which product one reason could be ki yes who will pay more they will at the top shelf but after that is there any any other criteria like based upon the color 
because I think they look fantastic if you put in a very attractive segment of the colors, right? It could be, but that could be again one quantitative research as well could be a qualitative as well, but I don't think so more quantitative, I think. So you study different malls and you identify uh, on the variable, he, what is, uh, what is the, what method they use to keep or arrange their shelves, right? And how many they use and for how many months and how they change it. So if you collect numbers and data about it, so I think you should be able to done one quantitative research as well. So this is about the quantitative now let's come to the mixed method research approach. So in mixed method approach, this uh, approach involves collecting both quantitative and qualitative data. That is the first thing, okay? And I give you very clear uh, uh, warning here that if you do a, uh, let's say one questionnaire based data collection and you conduct uh, is few uh, interviews as well, we cannot call it a mixed methods approach, right? You have to thoroughly conduct two separate studies connected to the similar problem, right? And uh, you have to follow all the assumptions and the scientific method of quantitative and qualitative, and then you have to integrate the two, you know? And that is the plus point of the mixed methods that in addition to the results of the quantitative and the qualitative, you also have one section, the comparison of these two data. And then it has a more holistic and you know a better or a complete uh, information or knowledge or understanding about that issue. Okay. So the very important thing is you have to collect both quantitative and qualitative, just having on the side few interviews will not convert your quantitative research into a mixed method. It will not. Okay. And, uh, and you have to integrate both the results and you have to compare them, uh, how they differ from each other, how they similar to each other, how they contradict with each other. And uh, then actually your research will be called as a mixed method approach. And you have to justify that as well. Right. So for this, one example I have taken here is the uh, how people how people associate the gender and their drinking habit. Okay, and sometimes they have the stereotypes: ki who can drink and they are good, and, and if somebody else will drink, they have become bad. So, what is the connection between these this thing? And I have not given example for the qualitative and quantitative research because sufficiently you have and you can access that. But I have given few examples uh, of the research which used mixed method. And this is the link here, which you can check later on. And this research is about the gender and alcohol. And uh, they used uh, they used mixed method. Uh, so they, they conducted a quantitative research as well, the drinking habits of the people of both the genders. And they as well conducted uh, one-on-one -on -one interviews that what kind of biasness they face in the society when they reveal that yes they 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 drink alcohol okay so that is one example second example is where mixed method is used is student anxiety right student anxiety can be better understand when you have a quantitative data like with the number of teaching hours, how many exams, how many marks, what are the different platforms, and then actually talking with them and listening to their own problems. And then you connect together and then you say, okay, okay, these are the reasons behind the student anxiety. And then this is a link of a research paper, which is related to the student anxiety. So which in, in this paper, they justify why mixed method is a better approach to understand the student anxiety. Then the third example I'm giving here, it is about the family formation. So in this research, research they used a uh, uh, mixed method to understand like how in today's time, the concept of family is changing. Like what is a family? How many members should be in a family? Can uh, LB, sorry, can, can the all gender types have the family and how how it is going to impact upon the society and how actually the whole family formation system is changing. 
So they use both quantitative and qualitative research approaches. So quantitative in the form of uh, number of families with a different number of uh, family members and their genders, right? And their different ethnicities. And then talking with them personally, why they decided to do that, like a lot of adoption of the families, a lot of uh, uh, using advanced medical methods for going for the kids, right? So why? Why they took all those decisions? So the family formation has been studied in this research paper using the mixed method approach. Okay? So this is about the, I think, I think I'm done with this. Yeah. Okay. So this is exercise for you, first exercise, and you will be given first one minute for it. And uh, the title of this exercise is uh, brand preference and consumer emotions. Okay. So I'm showing you here three pictures. One is Tide, one is Maggie, and one is Royal Enfield Bullet. Right? And if you want to understand the brand preference and the consumer emotions, which product will you choose? Sorry, for each product, which method will you choose? Like for Tide, which method will you choose? Quantitative, qualitative, or uh, mixed method? Or for Maggie, which one? And for this bike, which one? Or you think that this question itself is wrong and I will go with combination of everything. Anyway, I think just try to formulate some research related to this title, related to this product, and then justify your research approach. Is it okay? Any question? Or I can start the time. Okay, I think no questions, so I think I can start the time. Shall I? Any one person can say yes, so I will just start the time. Yes. Okay, great. So, and it again, it's not a compulsion, but as uh, Rahul sir told that all of you have already decided that you will be in groups and discussing something. So according to your group, I think you can plan, discuss, and then after this, we will discuss ki why this product, you think that this method is good when you, dis when you want to understand the brand preference and the consumer emotions. Okay, all the best, and here we go. Okay, so can we hear some of the answers? Time is up, yeah. Can we hear some of the answers for which product and which method, which approach? Uh, sir, may I? Yes, may I please tell your, yeah, Mayurish, yes, Mayurish, please. So I think I'll start with bullet. Okay. Now the, now the, the this vehicle, this uh, bullet is representative of self image. It entirely depends on the concept of self-image. So it will, uh, uh, the, the research will be, the methodology will be qualitative in nature, according to me. Then uh, Tide, it is uh, based on, I mean, even both Tide and Maggie, they, they both involve the psychographic and demographic variables. And uh, I think Tide, uh, which is completely a segmentation product, based on segmentation of Indian market, because in India, we have dif uh, different regions where there is scarcity of water, where there is more water or hard water, soft water. So it's a case of segmentation. So there we will go, we'll go with, we'll go with uh, quantitative, but whereas Maggie, it has a uh, young audience and it has, uh, it, they have already, uh, they are already uh, marketing in terms of uh, qualitative and qual most of qualitative marketing they're doing. So I think, uh, Maggie will both have qualitative and quantitative because Maggie also has competition. Mixed method. Okay, thank you, Mary, sir. Thank you.
anyone else also would like to give input so good afternoon this is uh, amrita yes, um, for the first product tied um, uh, as it is a product wherein mostly women use or the um, women take a decision to buy which product for my household so i would like to go for a, a mixed approach wherein how much you buy uh, and what kind of an uh, uh, expectations do you have from this product and for who are the competitors so mostly i'll be using both qualitative as well as quantitative method so it will be a mixed approach for again um for the third product which is uh, the bike where in royal enfield wherein i would like to go for more of a qualitative approach because it is more of a uh, i can say more than riding a normal bike it is a very special bike so i will go for qualitative Again, for Maggie, um, if I talk about consumer emotions and brand preference, I would, uh, as you have mentioned, a very normal Maggie. So I would also ask that whether you would like to go for a wheat Maggie or would you like to go for that? So again, for that, I would like to go for a qualitative than the quantitative. So for Tide, qualitative and quantitative, that is mixed. For Maggie, qualitative and for Bullet, also qualitative. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. So I would like to take a, a, a little different approach, not mm -hmm. for the method, but how I would approach it. Uh, so we're talking about brand preference, consumer emotions, very connected to marketing. And also uh, in marketing, the different kinds of products. So you have convenience products, you have shopping products, and you have, you know, uh, complex products. So I think that uh, the convenience products like, uh, you know, uh, Maggie and uh, Tide, could be uh, studied with quantitative. I may not even go for mixed, but uh, definitely, uh, you know, a, a product uh, like uh, Enfield or maybe the bullet that is being shown or the bike. I don't know which bike has been shown. Actually, I'm pretty bi bad at bikes. Okay. So the bike that has been shown, uh, I think that is a speciality kind of a, a bike. And uh, there could be, uh, you know, some more inputs required why people are buying it and, you know, what is the use for it? Because perhaps Tide is used for cleaning uh, clothes. That's it. Maggie, uh, yes, you eat it as a snack, but buying an expensive bike is not just you want to travel from A to B. Uh, there could be many reasons why people invest in a very high-end bike. And I think that I would go for qualitative. And okay. I'm not going to go for any mixed research, perhaps. Mixed okay. approach. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And your reason for not going mixed method for Maggie is because it is not a high-end product. It is a convenient product. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the part of Maggie, uh, the amount of money uh, a consumer is going to spend from his budget is going to be very tiny. And perhaps it, it's got a lot of substitutes. Mm -hmm. And the way I would like to understand the attitude towards that product is through understanding uh, quantitative, uh, you know, uh, variables or factors. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes, Amul sir. Yeah, please. Yes, I think to add to what Ma'am said, with respect to Maggie, there is, uh, uh, this is my perception, bit more awareness about the factors why people would prefer Maggie. The speed, as you know, uh, it saves time and other stuff which is widely kind of known to people. So there are set of factors that we can look at and think of questions, you know, set around it. So it could be more of quantitative in that case. About Tide, honestly, I'm a bit confused. There's one element that I think necessitates a qualitative thing is this 6 kg plus 2 kg free element. So I feel I'm not sure if people would respond to questionnaire and they would say they have liked it because it's free. Uh, that's my opinion again. So that's something that can be explored when there is discussion and people would share it just out of you know discussion and unintentionally. Whereas if it's a questionnaire, I don't know how many, depending on culture and, you know, uh, value system of the people, but typically people uh, hesitate to say uh, that they have gone for it because it's free, especially when it is in writing. That's my perception. So I would prefer either qualitative, but there are other aspects of Tide as a brand preference thing, maybe emotions attached to it, that can be quantified. There could be things that will get better when it is quantified. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of subjective things around it. Thank you, Mr. Few more answers. Uh, I think, 
यस ओके यस बोलिए सर अजय सर व्हाट आई फील मैगी वेर दे हैव ऑलवेज फोकस्ड इट ऑन टू मिनट्स सो इट इज मोर ऑफ क्वांटिफाइबल की this product is been you can use it in 2 minutes just have it and move on so it is more quantifiable uh, so i would consider that approach as quantitative tied uh, again uh, mix i would uh, consider because on one side uh, as amol sir said 6 kg 2 kg if you see that exact uh, product in front of you it gives you a quantifiable thing and qualitative because झाक देती है कितना सफेद सो इट इज अगेन समथिंग क्वालिटेटिव इन नेचर ठीक है इफ यू हैव सीन दैट एड ऑफ टाइट के वो इट कम्स एंड अ व्हाइट पैच कम्स इनटू द एड ऑफ दैट सो अगेन दैट इज क्वालिटेटिव इन नेचर एंड सो आई कंसीडर टाइड एज मिक्स एंड व्हाइल बुलेट व्हिच इज अ रॉयल एनफील्ड प्रोडक्ट i would uh, consider it as qualitative again because uh, masculine a uh, person with who would love to uh, ride that bike power all these are things which i feel are more uh, qualitative in nature uh, and less in quantitative that is what my understanding is thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you thank you thank you thank you okay some more inputs ah uh. Yes, please, please. Yeah. Uh, actually, if we think from the point of view of company, uh, being a finance person, uh, I understand the uh, tide and two minutes noodle is a game of you know uh, selling it on a mass scale, right? So uh, for making this product popular, definitely we have to consider the consumer emotions, but at the same time we uh, have to you know. Uh, understand the level of production and uh, uh, you know uh, making it popular in the day to day market so uh, i will go for uh, mix approach in case of tied and two minutes uh, noodle uh, as per my uh, uh, less understanding of the research but uh, in case of bullet uh, if you if you look at the profitability level in the luxurious item uh, it is uh, you know uh, very high so same case with the rolls royce and all so uh, for rolls royce i will go for the qualitative approach uh, like bike and uh, and yeah thank you ma'am sir may i may i add this is jitiman please please, please uh sir according to me i think all three of them should be having mixed approach uh because the title yes, that sir, we let me, just let me yes. stop you there because see once you do everything so that is the of course the right answer hmm. right but uh, if you choose i think mm-hmm. among the options that will be better because of mm-hmm. course mix method is the best method because mm-hmm. you do the both qualitative and quantitative then then sir i i think i would say that the data is insufficient at this point of time because if you mm-hmm. look at the heading it speaks about brand preference and consumer emotions right mm-hmm. so if i am speaking of brand preference of tide i need to understand that what are its competitors doing and based on the consumer's response i'll be understanding how people are preferring tide over let's say let's say any other uh, uh, we can say uh, name any other uh, washing company that is doing in the in, in the market that is running in the market at this point of time so how would i how would i understand what what customer should prefer one thing over the other if i'm speaking of maybe maggi i'll try to find out whether maggi is doing well in a particular area as compared to ep as compared to yy so if i'm considering my brand preference if i'm under, trying to understand my consumer's emotions as a whole i need to understand what are the products doing at this point of time in the market when speaking of a bullet I, it 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 runs within the price range of 1 lakh to 2 lakhs so if we consider it, the, the particular demographics of the particular area and the income level of the people is really high uh, people yes. can afford classic 350 royal enfield people can afford an avenger uh, so it depends on their preference so i need to know on what basis are we doing this doing this uh, analysis sir so, kritiman bhai no one is stopping you from knowing you can do literature review and find out <laughs> about uh, the competitors brand preference 
so what what are we trying to literally find out because if we are speaking of when preference and consumer emotions uh, it would obviously require both of the methods i i cannot i mean uh, i just cannot put a finger on, on on one of the options that it should be qualitative it should be quantitative because uh, in this case each one of them will be complementing each other that's that's what i think okay sir thank you sir yes, sir. Oh, me, sir you want to go uh yes sir hi uh, yeah yogesh sir please ask y- yes sir ravi sir yes. uh hi uh i am ravindra joshi speaking uh i think uh, you know uh, basically the bullet which is a very versatile and it has come as a brand for you know masculine personality particularly so it can go with a qualitative approach uh and the tied basically it's a more on a volumic basis uh, because you know like a discount or it's selling on volume basis so it can be quantified and it can be a quantified analysis and when it comes to maggi maggi comes with emotion as well as quantity because you know uh, the taste i believe emotion is linked to the quality also and of course two minutes uh, is quantity so quality and quantity is getting mixed here so the maggi can have a mixed approach that's my thought process thank yes, you thank you so much sir really nice mm-hmm. sir yes please ma'am uh, i think uh, bike is uh, related here uh, for bike we have to measure the emotion we have to uh, we have to uh, find out how emotional people are and whether they have money with them so only few people we have to find out and again why they are choosing that also we have to find out so therefore it is qualitative whereas uh, here for tide and maggi uh, we can count and we can count the number so we can use a mixed method also we can use a qualitative sorry quantitative data also because alternatives are available so here for by i have to use Uh, for tide and uh, maggi i ha- i can use the bottom of the pyramid so last phase i can use over here whereas for buy i have to use a first phase so here uh, i can say that for buy the uh, we have to measure the uh, qualitative data whereas i think that was uh, a brilliant answer and- based upon the sample that is good very, very brilliant answer ma'am thank you thank you so much Yes. because based upon the sample because yeah that was brilliant answer yes okay if you have some more you no know, let we can go for the next because now we all know what to answer let's have one more problem now this time problem is lifestyle and health you know lifestyle and health this is the research problem like what kind of a lifestyle you have and what kind of health we can say you will be having so these are the three different scenarios and uh, you are free to choose the way you want it to be but you have to justify for this what kind of a research approach for this what kind of research approach and for this what kind of research approach Ajay sir, the suggestion. If this one minute, please, can you just have a poll on this so that they can write whether it is mixed, qualitative, or quantitative? Just then can I? We can ask one or two faculties related to one of the methods. Yeah, I think just one or two people can speak because then okay. we have already shortage of time, I guess. Yes. So yeah, please quickly if we can answer, then we can go next. So I would like to go first as we are mm-hmm. talking about lifestyle. Mm-hmm. We will have to do psychographic analysis, and I think psychographic analysis is not so straightforward as demographics. so mm-hmm. a qualitative approach uh, 
a methodology that is more uh, heavy on qualitative approach is what I would like to go for. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think we can just give some more time people to think. And it was so far, it is brilliant, actually. So all of you, I think I would, it was just brilliant. All of your answers were very good. So very nice. So yeah, so I think let's go move to the next theme of our work because we have 15 minutes more. So yeah, now we'll just discuss, discuss few tools and uh, of the which can help you with the literature review. So and uh, I will be not explaining what is literature review, because the pain you know already that how lit literature review looks like and when we are doing it how bored we are that ki, oh my god how many papers okay how many papers more so it's so complex it's never ending and you know that by the time you finish then more papers are on the way so how to you know do it with the help of the technology so that is what we are trying to do now so i hope all of you agree that <laughs> literature review looks like this only but maybe more worse than this, but not easy than this, definitely. Okay, so uh, the tools which I'm going to share with you, I found uh, on the uh, handle of this uh, scientist, Anika. She is a uh, medical PhD student and uh, her tweet also got went viral in the June. And uh, she shared actually some tools, like one is connected papers, open knowledge map, scholar AC, speechify and as site. And, uh, then I came to know that, yes, technology also can help us with the efficient literature review and not just the Google Scholar. World has moved much more beyond the Google Scholar. <laughs> so that was also shocking for me as well, of course. So let me give you a little bit shock to you as well. And maybe you, some of you may be already doing it, knowing it. But for others who are slow like me, so for us, let's learn a little bit more. OK, so uh, first uh, thing which we are going to learn is called as connective papers. And uh, this is a tool which uh, help you to visualize the work of the people. You know, visualize it. It will give you a graph the way it is. It will give you a graph like this. Okay. And uh, what it will do is uh, it will keep one paper in the center, which is called as the origin paper, and it will find out the papers similar to that paper. Okay. And I think uh, yeah. So that is how the connected papers work. And let's and if you want to know more about it, so when I will share the slides, uh, you can check this paper came uh, here in Nature, and they also identify connective paper as very important tool for doing the literature review. And now let's do some demo. Okay, are you able to see this new website, a web page? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so this is the website of connected papers, and as they say, explore connected papers is in visual graph. So let's say you want to understand about the, I'm taking the easiest one. What should I take? Brand image, not brain image, brand image. Yes. So these are the different papers. It is showing automatically related to the brand image, but I just do not want to go with any paper, but uh, let's uh, simply build a graph. Yes. So I hope you are able to see one graph has come up at the center, right? Now, first, let me tell you a quick help thing is there, this question mark here bottom. So if you click on this, it will tell you what this, how to interpret this graph, okay? So it says that papers are arranged according to their similarity. So they are arranged according to their similarity. The node of the size, this is called as node. The size, the bigger the size, the more the citations for that paper, okay? So let's see, this is the smaller. So the citations are zero. This is little bigger. So citations are 56. You can see the citations this side here. And this is very big. So the citations are 403. So the size shows that uh, which paper is important by the citation. The, the paper which is in the focus is in the center by a black boundary here. Here it is. So, so all these papers are connected with this central paper. And those scholars among you who are working with the brand image maybe know this author and this paper. So, you know, it is having some 340 citations published in Journal of Sport Management. And these are the related connected papers. Okay. Now, what, because I'm just looking at the watch as also, it is 11 minutes, I have more. So I will be little speeding it up here. So you can expand it here. And 
you can uh, see uh, all those, uh, uh, like if you want to go back, you can just, sorry, okay. You can collapse and you can go back again to this, okay? So this is the visual presentation and these are the same papers in the list here, okay? So if you want to arrange them based upon the author, based upon the year, based upon the citation, based upon the number of references in each of that paper and similarity to your uh, main paper, so you can arrange them accordingly, like you want to arrange them based upon the number of citations. So now they are arranged based upon the number of citations. So this paper is having 1000 plus citations, 770 citations, 43 citations. So that help us, you know, one is the major criteria to find out if this is cited more, this is an important paper. That is the one criteria most of us use, right? That is the way connected papers can help us. And uh, you can also download the whole list this list you can download here and uh, any uh, bibliography making tool you are using, you can take this complete list directly into that. Like I use a tool called as Zotero for making the references and which we will be talking in my next session, fourth session, and we will be teaching plagiarism and doing the referencing. Then I will show how to connect all this paper just with one file and, and import it in your references. Okay. So I think, uh, this much only I have about this very quickly. And uh, yes, let's say one more important thing. You want to change the center of the origin. You think that this paper is cited more and you want to change this. So I think you can click here and then you can click here, connected papers. So now this paper will become the center of origin. So if you click here, a new website will open up. And now that paper which you want to be center of origin, now this paper has become the center of origin and all the papers which are similar to this paper are, are now next to it. Okay. I think uh, this will help us actually day by day, thousands and thousands of paper there. And then how to find out the paper which are important for us, it can reduce some of our help, help. it can give us some help at least. Okay. So I think this is okay with the connected papers. Now, okay, yeah. Okay, now the next one is, is called as Open Knowledge Map. And uh, Connected Paper is a commercial platform, but Open Knowledge Map is also doing the same thing. Like their target is to revolutionize the, you know, scientific knowledge by giving people access, a map of the connected research work. So it works in a very similar way, the way Connected Paper works work but it is a charitable non-profit organizations so i think you can trust them more kind of because they're not commercially motivated and if you look at their website it looks like this and again like i searched already brand image so if you go for the brand image again so now they are creating the brand yes so this is also a visualization all the papers which are important if you want to work upon the brand image but they have done a little more work is that they grouped the paper based upon the sub themes of the brand image. Like here you see, all these papers are related to the brand image, but business, brand loyalty and brand relationship. So if you click here, you can access all the papers which are related, not access actually, but you get the information. You can access only if you have, you know, way to download them some way. Okay, so and if our institution has the uh, legal permission to download them, or if you have the libgen, then you can download it, of course. So this is the way uh, to go for the open knowledge map. And uh, you can uh, at least you can find out which are important paper for you. And then you can, you know, uh, instead of reading everything or it can help you, it can make our search easy. That is, the, I think, the important point I can say. Okay. So I'm going a little fast because I need to wind up at the time. So, and if you have still, if you have any question, please do not hesitate. I will be answering that, right? The next important technology is, is called as Scholar C plugin, which is for the Chrome only, okay? And what Scholar C does it, you know, as, as you see in this image, it will take your research paper. You can upload the research paper. And if it is online, you can give the URL or the DOI number of the research paper and it will give you the summary of the research paper it will tell you the most important line in the introduction it will tell the most important point from the discussion it will tell the most important line from the conclusion so all important section it will give you the most important line from the whole paper 
okay how it will do it that is the algorithm that is the ai they are using to find out the most important line from the paper and if you trust it you can use it of course so let's take very quick view of this so let's say this is one research paper in front of me and i want to use scholar c to find the gist of this paper so i have downloaded the plugin here so this is the plugin and yeah yes so this has th this one has created the summary of this research paper like uh, if you want to just tweet the whole summary so you can tweet directly or if you want to check the key concept these are the key concept abstract these are the key concept scholarly highlights really means like what is the most academic thing written in this paper these are the most important academic things written in this paper so let's see summary of this whole paper and uh, then we have the full text not required among the introduction what is the most important and in the references what are the uh, like uh, what are the different uh, types of re references they have used you know to write this paper and uh, i'm just using the free version there are paid versions as well where you can have more and many things to do with the scholarship but i think even this much help is also good and appreciated if you are able to use it and you can also download this whole thing and uh, you can save it and in the form of pdf and then you can see it later on right but of course there is a limitation how many times you can use it but i think uh, as we all are part of the same institution and if we can convince our institution i think this is the right investment where our research fund should be can be used and should be used okay so this is about the scholar c yes and uh, yes 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 you can download from here so i kept the link here in the slides you can find and this is done okay the th next fourth i think fourth one is the speechify speechify is again is a app for the chrome and what it does is that it will read everything for you and it has a plugin for the chrome right so in case you are doing some work in home and still you want to go through with the paper so you can put speechify on the work and it will read your uh, paper and then you can listen it okay and you can learn about it of course so and this is also paid one so you can have uh, from here you can download it and uh, uh, I think if I can want to show you demo here. So mm, yes, if you look at here, see, this is the Speechify thing. If I play here. The effect of brand attitude and brand image on brand equity. Pages 61 to 75 published online, 08 DEC 2015. Brand equity has been criticized by some for an alleged lack of managerial relevance. This paper reports a study which up. Okay. So that doesn't mean I do every time like this. No, I'm still using the free version and I intentionally did not use or consume the whole thing because I want to do the session. So I just kept it ready so that at least I can show the whole team key how Speechify works. And if some of you are like driving a lot of time, so of course you can use it that time key while driving, you can listen to the paper and at, at least out of 10 words, five words also went inside. It is the right use of the time, right? So uh, this is the Speechify app and which is very, very helpful and very, very good for listening. If you think that listening works for you, then the reading, then go for the Speechify. Then we have one more app, which is called as Sight. S is silent, it is called as Sight. So what they do is, uh, this is very interesting uh, app, I like it, that uh, what they do is uh, uh, they have like 27 million full test articles with them and their power is that they in in the research paper they can exactly tell you whether the research findings are contrasted by the others mentioned by the others or supported by the others and that is very interesting Key, their ai algorithm is in such a way that they can tell whether the findings of this research papers are are supported by how many you know mentioned by how many and contrasted by how many so that is fantastically good but of course again it is a paid one and if you just go for a quick demo here so yes so this is how a site uh, looks like and if you just uh, take one example from here uh, i think uh, saw something okay this is different wait
हाँ भैया ये है सी एग्जाम्पल रिपोर्ट Yes, like uh, I think this is largely used in the uh, experimental based research, like pure sciences, because they actually have to because as the way site has been made, the examples are mainly from the pure sciences. So because uh, they have to exactly see ki in which cases their hypotheses are rejected, findings are contrasted, or any other way. But of course, social science also can use, and we management studies under the social science, of course, we can also use. So see, this is how it works. Uh, this is the research uh, for for this research paper. The findings are supporting in this research paper, contrasting in this research paper, just mentioned in this research paper. again supporting in this research paper so it is very helpful you know if you remember about the research framework i was talking about writing the discussion section and in which you have to tell how similar and different your results are from the earlier research so if we can have access to this uh, whole you know whole app or whole system i think it will be very helpful for us to write the discussion section and find out ki the results we got you know how similar or different they are from the other people's research you know so that is the one important benefit of the okay i my time is over i just i will take few more minutes i am i am okay raul sir can i take few more minutes hello yes sir okay sorry because yeah okay so so this is about the s site and then i'm just sharing few more resources with you if you want to improve your writing skills especially about the research so professor oh, pat from so has a fabulous blog yeah, pattern, and you can write you can learn very good things about writing the research and professor yeah. roll about from whom we got that name right of the approaches read everything from his website fantastic if you are afraid of statistics read andy field book he is the he is the master and is the best person who helped me to overcome the fear of statistics read everything from from andy field and join twitter twitter follow the people of your interest and you will reach to a information which will take several months to become part of the formal education so i think join some social media and use it carefully i think yes now we can have question answers i'm sorry for exceeding by 1 minute 30 seconds <laughs> yes yeah please i think it's okay sir for extending uh, so yes uh, if any question answers are there so we can have a 5 uh, to 10 minutes for question answer okay sir maybe i i, I myself is having a question <laughs> related yes, to sir, the, please, uh, please, so you have shown the first uh, tool is there uh, where we can Uh, after searching whatever the interest our uh, area is there and then we get uh, as per the citations and the most relevant papers we will get right mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you do it in the google seller we may get a uh, different uh, kind of a papers over there but suppose uh, suppose i uh, search something and i got only uh, 30 or 40 papers which are most relevant to that so is it okay if i write only literature review paper on that or it's considered for suppose i'm writing a paper and consider that much literature only uh see sir again technology will never take decisions decisions we have to take as a researcher right now the question is how many papers are see we can use these uh, apps and these websites when we are using and we are trying to identify what is latest under the very broad one like brand image is a very broad concept under that what is latest of course we can get help here but exactly specifically to the research problem which we are dealing you know exactly the variables which we are looking luckily you can find but you cannot guarantee it so you can get a broad help but we cannot say ki we will get exactly what we are looking for that uh, intervention is required when we get the results from all these different platforms okay yes, okay uh Sir, I will read the question. Omni sir has posted a question in the chat box. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, any direction for selecting a worthful topic? Uh, any criteria or antecedents? First criteria is interest. <laughs> the interest. Why are you doing the research? You know, and uh, see, uh, uh, 
you know why i am telling from my own story and life ki why i took a lot of time for my research phd thesis because i was still struggling ki why i should do research what is my interest area you know i really struggled a lot with that and because my perspective is also about the thing is i want to understand interdisciplinary and i i and i want to understand everything about it right so focusing upon that i use mixed methods in my research focusing upon that i learn a advanced tool r for my research right focusing upon that ki i like interdisciplinary my subject area becomes sustainable consumption right i i read and i work about sustainable consumption focusing nowadays upon the waste so and we need to choose that after reading it there is no shortcut we have to read we have to write and we have to communicate so there is no shortcut for it and uh, the early you find the interest area and the less you make the changes you will not have to start about the literature review from the scratch every time it is only one time exercise you deal with all okay you have to deal with the major books reading major books only one time so that's why you know most of the scientists have maximum to maximum two interest area or three interest major discipline areas because they want to master it later critique it and then contribute it so identifying the problem first is interest and after that read books about it not just the research papers because books gives us idea research papers help us ki how to take that idea forward and what is latest happening to deal with that idea thank you for the question sir then thank you as any other questions yeah one more question sir please uh so like uh, right now what happened generally we are following the trends and the fashions which are going in the research mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes what happened uh, you have a ample of data ample of uh, maybe topics with you but mm -hmm. how to look for the you know that particular topic which may be very useful then how do you come to know about it just like say i have gone through various books maybe papers also mm -hmm. just to look for that particular implication part so mm -hmm. i always have some kind of uh, doubt like mm -hmm. to select the best implication so mm -hmm. is there any some tool may be available for that also right now you have shared lot of very useful tools yes sir sir uh, one thing about the researchers are we should be always confused that is very important for us okay <laughs> so that but we should be confused with the proper uh, what is a pro proper training you know we are trained to be confused actually kind of right so that we question and then we answer so if you are writing anything and you are confused nothing to worry but only thing is that educate yourself about that confusion talk with the people who are expert in that area so that they can help you to understand that confusion whenever you are doing some research work do not share your results with anybody only talk with the people with whom you can trust only talk okay i'm not saying sharing the results only talk with them and share your confusion right so because sharing results is never ever ever done activity other than your co-authors okay so only finding only you can control your confusion and you can under, understand your confusion by talking with your mentors by by contacting the people who has already published in that and in that case i find myself very lucky because i have luckily i have some contacts in the good universities who if i sincerely tell them ki i am working on this and this is the work i have done already can you please help me there i got help i got help so i'm not saying bad words but of course if i contact iit people here or iim people they find they take lot of time to respond but i found very active reply from the abroad universities if we are sincere in our approach i found very very good reply okay we are fantastic researchers no hard feelings but we are still very very fearful you know to say few words ki yes this can help you you know we are still very fearful but yes confusion is good thing but train your confusion we should train our confusions i'm sorry if my answer is very vague i'm sorry sir. no thanks 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 sir for the answers thanks last any the other last like, this will be the last question any one wants to ask question yes, yes. pooja ma 
yeah good afternoon sir yeah uh, having a very great session uh, from ajay sir side uh, sir my query is like uh, that uh, when we are writing some quantitative papers mm -hmm. i'm observing that the journals are also not uh, having too much interest to publish those papers where we are quantify uh, our results and uh, giving some information in terms of quanti quantitative uh, rather than when we are going with the literature or qualitative research uh, then we are uh, uh, getting a good response so uh, such kind of scenario is going on where the qualitative research is more uh, influential more important than the quantitative research so what are the probable reason for this and how we can rectify it yes, sir ma'am one reason is uh, of uh, in nowadays people are appreciating qualitative research and uh, i'm not say literature review but meta analysis meta analysis is is a lot of in demand and qualitative research as well because quantitative research has become so standardized so standardized you know that ki anyone can just do you know, it means I, i i should go with my own slide ki the structure has become so set you know china has become number one in publishing research papers in last few years the reason is they are very good with the multiplication you know so even it doesn't make much sense doesn't have real contribution to the knowledge but they are good with the multiplication you know quantity producing quantity we all know that china is good in that so same they did with the journals papers so somehow today you know if you send structural equation modeling paper to journals india from india especially they simply reject because every person in india is using scm without understanding it so this i came to know from some editors only during some talk but that doesn't mean we should not apply it but we should not apply it blankly we should give a proper justification why this method is used and definitely uh, um because it is easy also with the advancement of the data science and the tools you can tweak the data you can make your hypothesis to be forcefully significant right so and then cross checking it is becoming very very difficult and which is called as reproducibility in the science and reproducibility in the research and i am very interested in that and i read i read a lot about this and maybe in future i will take a session also through some platform ki in today's time reproducibility of the research is becoming one of the most important and the critical factor until unless i cannot reproduce your research results it is not going to be published and that time is going to come very soon that's why the open platform like r and data sharing and python become very famous because they makes you very easy how you did the analysis by sharing the code by sharing the data and then can journal can make sure ki you are not manipulating anywhere so that is the one reason quantitative research is questioned and you know they have been seen with eyes of suspicion but qualitative also is very rigorous it's not easy and still i say qualitative publishing qualitative paper is more challenging is more difficult in instead of the quantitative papers yeah thank you sir thank you welcome got my answer ah uh, so uh, before giving a formal vote of thanks to the ajay sir so yeah uh, first of all thank you all the participants for uh, on sunday uh, on saturday afternoon uh, in a way we are celebrating this as a research day and i think this is the best way to uh, celebrate it uh, by taking insights on the research Uh, so as uh, many of you have formed the groups, those who are not from the groups, you can form a group with your uh, colleagues from the departments, or as I said, you can have inter uh, departmental or like interdisciplinary groups also. Now, what you can do have to group is the first task will be there. So again, you can decide uh, what is the scope uh, of that particular task is there. So today we have learned uh, mixed method, quantitative, qualitative approach, and uh, later on the discussion is also going on how to uh, identify a topic or your interest area. so many of you are already st maybe starting working on uh, some topics so the uh, activity or the task will be that uh, on which your topic you are working and which approach you have uh, selected for that particular topic come with some justification now uh, definitely we are not going to uh, question your justification but maybe like as i said on brand preference and customer emotions we got multi uh, opinions and perception on that so maybe uh, you will get uh, some perception on others maybe from other participants and other research person so we'll spend first 15 minutes of uh, next saturday session on this but i hope all groups will uh, come with that uh, research title interest area and then uh, which approach they will go and wh why they are justifying like as last question uh, uh, pooja ma'am asked Uh, why journals are uh, resulting quantitative paper and qualitative paper and then the answer is you are not able to or we are not able to 
justify it so yes i hope you will work on it in uh, the, this week and come with the justification for that why you selected that particular approach and we'll spend first 15 minutes for that and then we'll uh, continue with the next session so here uh, uh, i would like to thank uh, dr ajay kumar kori for uh, this brilliant and wonderful session lot of insights uh, for uh, us here and uh, definitely we are looking for your sir uh, one more session that is on the 4th uh, of december so thank you uh, ajay sir and thank you all the participants for joining and uh, see you on next saturday okay thank bye you bye. for joining thank you thank bye. you sir thank you sir Thank you sir. Thank you team. Thank you everyone.